Did you guys all eat? Yep. No. No? Okay. Hi. Good morning. Um, normally, I don't like to do large press conferences. I'd rather talk to you individually, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. This case seems to have drawn an inordinate amount of interest. Um, and actually, uh, a lot of things, uh, urban myths, so to speak, that aren't quite accurate. So I figure I'd address some of those and tell you what I think is um, the current state of both the investigation and what actually happened. When this um, matter, when at least when I was called, I mean, uh, people have portrayed what happened with uh, my client, Chris Brown, as a standoff with LAPD. First of all, I'd like to debunk that. This was not a standoff. Um, exactly what happened is we were called in the morning. We were told that uh, the LAPD was on scene. Uh, I specifically asked, is there a search warrant or an arrest warrant? We were told there was not. Um, and I advised my client uh, without uh, revealing any attorney client, because I told the same thing to LAPD, that he was not going to come outside. He would wait for me to get there. And if they didn't have a search warrant, he was not going to consent to anything at this point. Um, given the, uh, his history, I think that was the prudent thing to do. LAPD was very professional in that sense and uh, waited for me to get there. Uh, told me that they were very frank about the fact that they were seeking both an arrest and a search warrant based on a claim that was made by a woman who had claimed to be in the house. Uh, we then, I got there before the search warrant was executed. The search warrant started to be executed at roughly 1 o'clock, 1.30, somewhere in that time period. Um, the entire house was filmed first by LAPD, um, both video and with still cameras. Uh, we, they then did the search. After the search, uh, it was reported to me that they, based on not finding a gun and not finding drugs, which has been reported, that they were um, instructed to, that they were going to arrest Mr. Brown. He posted bail of $250,000 and was released the same day after he was brought downtown um, and booked uh, in the uh, outside of, or next to the Parker Center. Um, there's been a number of things that have been reported that um, have been false. I think even before a search warrant was executed, I'm told, and it was reported, I don't know if it's true or not, that um, a gentleman by the name of Carl Moore, who is the lawyer for royalty, Chris's daughter's um, mother, had stated that royalty was in the house. That is categorically false. She was not in the house, was not there that evening. Um, so I need to knock that down. I was there and she um, was clearly not there the entire time that I was there. Chris was completely cooperative at all times with the officers and I believe LAPD confirmed that, that he was cooperative and had uh, allowed them even to the point of unlocking certain items and things of that nature. Also, while I was there, so that I can debunk this as well, I can tell you that there was, uh, there's been reports that a large amount of cash was taken. That is not true. There was some cash in the house, uh, was photographed and released to a representative of Mr. Brown's. There also, by this, this, this so-called accuser, was a um, statement that was given to the police that apparently there was some jewelry there and she described with great detail what this piece of jewelry was. We examined and the officers had me stand there and we filmed it as well, the examination of the jewelry. Nothing was found that corroborated her statement and I'm not going to say what it was uh, in deference to the ongoing investigation, but they were specifically looking for a specific type of jewelry. That was not found. There was no, as the best of my knowledge in the entire time I was there, there was no gun or guns found in that house whatsoever. There were no drugs that I'm aware of that were found in that house whatsoever. Um, we are now in possession of a number of items uh, ranging from things that purport to be a text sent by the accuser before she was picked up, um, things as uh, varied as restraining orders um, that have been filed against her, uh, police reports that were issued in other jurisdictions regarding her. We're tracking down all of these things. I'm informed that there is, um, and we're looking into and following up, both active investigations on her 
both on both coasts we're following up on that and we're at the same time putting a package together and we're going to be calling for if there isn't already because we've only heard it by rumor um, a formal criminal investigation uh, if in fact we can show that the provenance meaning that we can authenticate the text that was sent because if that text is true uh, then it gives great credence to what my client said initially is that nothing happened and this was a setup all of the witnesses who were in the house when I got there and there was approximately other than my client six other people all of them were present all of them voluntarily went outside all of them talked to LAPD and it, the best of my understanding at least on the information I have available to me I wasn't present during those interviews but I will tell you that it was uh, that it was reported back to me that none of them supported the story that was told the story that was conveyed to me by the witnesses there is that nothing happened that this woman got irate when she was asked to leave because she was acting in an erratic uh, manner and uh, specifically was told that you have to leave that's why that, uh, that we're exploring the text and whether or not that text um, is real because if it is it would seem to support and fit in with the mosaic and the timeline of what happened um, having said that I will take a limited number of questions um, and then let you all go back to doing more important stuff. Is yes. The text that said she was going to set him up, that there was no gun. Can you tell us what the text said? The text uh, was to the extent that uh, there was two. One that the the M effer is going to go down, and a second one saying that the Uber driver messed up and sending it to sending this text to somebody, tell him pick me up and I'm going to claim or he's going to go down that he uh, that I'm going to say he tried to shoot me. Mark, you mentioned his daughter royalty and you know that there's an ongoing custody situation between him and her mother. Could this, what's going on now with Chris, could this make him lose custody of his daughter? One of the things that we're investigating is there are now reports that the accuser um, has a relationship with the mother of his child. What's particularly disturbing to me is that this comes on the heels of a custody battle that he won and that the lawyer in Houston who represented the mother of royalty immediately came out and was making statements and, and if I if they're reported correctly they were false statements which leads me to believe I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist but that certainly would be one angle and do we have concern over custody of course I've got concern that when somebody fabricates a story and when somebody falsely accuses somebody that you then that he then has to become a target remember and I would uh, remind you of this I have represented him on no less than five other matters where specifically somebody has made a false accusation and once it was investigated um, it uh, was proven to be false this is not the first time that somebody has made a false accusation about Chris Brown and that is somewhat disturbing I understand in today's society that you become a target and that's one of the reasons why um, I think he asked her to leave in the first place because he did not want to get into that situation Mark, on the other hand this is also not the first time that someone has made an allegation against him that is true so when you have these that's two stories that are just diametrically opposed because what you were describing sounded like you know just nothing at all was going on I just wonder how we get here and why he was arrested why we get let, let me let me show you how Chris Brown gets treated. He has had documented by the LAPD at least six instances of people breaking into his house, of stalkers, of in fact in one case when he was out of the country, the woman actually moved into the house and who was subsequently ruled to be a 5150. Um, for those of you who don't know, that's on a psychiatric hold. Um, he could not get, I could not get a adequate response by the authorities in any of those instances. Here you've got somebody who claims something happened. Mind you, the police talked to Ray J, who said it never happened. He also went and posted a video, which I'm sure all of you have seen, saying it never happened. And the response was like something out of the siege at Fallujah. So for those of you who say, well, why would he be so upset? Um, try to imagine if you're a young man who's trying to, who's just gone over a, gone through a bitter custody battle, who loves nothing more in life than his daughter, to have somebody falsely accuse you when you can't get the authorities there promptly 
and his frustration is, and then somebody who he considers to be making false accusations gets a response that frankly is kind of somewhat over the top, literally, um, I, I think I would be just as frustrated. I will add to that, the, and I want to be clear on this, I'm not faulting, and he's not faulting LAPD who arrived there that day. I mean, I do, I do have a problem as a taxpayer with the amount of and deployment of resources. However, the professionalism by LAPD on that day was extraordinary, and the detectives from robbery homicide I would commend. And even if we end up doing battle together, I still would commend them, and I've known of them and known them for, for decades. The LAPD was very professional in how they executed the search warrant and very professional uh, as well. I just wish we could have gotten that same kind of response when there's been the prior incident. Now, in the Instagram videos that he posted, the three of them that are now deleted, if you could give any kind of reaction to the fact that they were posted, maybe you were involved in having them uh, deleted. But he spoke negatively about police, the fact they were at the house, the helicopters flying overhead. Uh, if you could speak to that and just how he's doing now. Well, look, the, I think that what I just explained about you have to take that from the backdrop of he's had these stalker issues. When he wants a response, um, he's not getting it. Remember, besides the stalker, there was a home invasion at the house where his aunt was tied up and put in a closet. So that, and that to this day has never been solved. Uh, once again, LAPD did try to make some efforts. I was involved in giving them information um, that I thought could be helpful, but that was never solved. So there, you have to understand it against that backdrop. Um, you can always say, hey, he's Chris Brown, he's had, um, we're going to just say um, he's Chris Brown and therefore he doesn't get the same kinds of rights that other people do. I think that's unfair. I'll take just a couple right, more you're questions. You're describing a case um, that is based on completely fabricated on the whole plot and not a shred of evidence to back any of it up. Why do you think your client has been charged or was in charge for this case if there's not a shred of evidence? I'm not, well, I, this is what I know. I know that I was there. I know that there, there was, as far as I can tell, no drugs found. I know, as far as I can tell, there were no guns found in the house. I know, as far as I can tell, that he was cooperative. All I know is that at a certain point, there was a statement made to me that we're going to arrest him. I won't get into the details of that, other than to say that's what happened. He was then... Um, arrested, obviously, he posted bail. It's going to ultimately be up to the district attorney's office whether to file charges. But Does Mary have a grudge against him, Mary Moran, in the DA's office? Well, look, I've known Mary, I think I've said this before, I've known Mary since the first day she interned as in the DA's office in Alhambra, and I have a great deal of affection for Mary, um, and I have not talked to Mary. And I don't think I've ever said a bad word about Mary, and I'm not going to start now, Patrick. Well, we, the state of the custody is that he has the order that's still in effect out of Houston when we litigated it there. Um, that was reaffirmed here. And um, information has been, we've been deluged with information. So I've got no less than four investigators working on this at the same time um, who are interviewing people. And we've been given information that there is a relationship there. And obviously, we're going to plumb that. One more, one, more, one, more, one, more, one more question. One more question from Bell right here. That we're doing. I've heard both duffel bag, backpack, I just heard backpack today, that was the first one, I've heard suitcase, and I heard a shopping bag. Um, I was there, I didn't see anything, nobody brought it to my attention, nobody asked, it wasn't presented to us to say, Chris, is this yours or not? Uh, if there was something recovered, I would suspect that it would be on a video because there, there were security cameras on the outside. The security cameras were taken, um, and I'll image those and we'll look. As far as I know, I've heard that. I can't tell you how many times. I just, there's no way for me to confirm or confirm Mark, that. The accuser has been on literally every single one of our shows telling a very specific story about a gun being held a foot away from her head. You, and why would she be making that story up with eyewitnesses around when everyone could discredit her? So you're saying that she unequivocally made that entire I'm telling you that based on the witnesses that we've interviewed, based on the client's statements, and based on the fact that there was no gun found in the house, 
based on the fact that there was no jewelry found in the house that matched what she described, based on the fact if it ends up being true that there's a text there that says I'm going to, this MF is going to go down and I'm going to set him up and say he's, he was going to shoot me, I know that some people find it hard to believe that people in this day and age may lie for certain ulterior motives, um, but it is interesting to me that when somebody has a incident that supposedly you're frightened to death and you're scared that the first place you go is to TMZ as opposed to the hospital, your psychiatrist, or maybe even your lawyer. So I think that speaks volumes. I think if anybody were to do, and clearly what we are doing, any kind of investigation, you would see here in California you're allowed to find similar motives and similar acts if they show a signature. And here we've already developed no less than three separate incidents involving this person with similar acts, with similar false accusations, with a motive, um, and I'm not going to ascribe the motive, I don't know the young lady, but um, there is a pattern that has already developed. Mark, do you think that Chris's past is coloring this investigation or maybe the authority's judgment in this investigation? I think if his name was um, Chris Winton, um, he would uh, not have had the SWAT team out there. I don't think he would have had that number of um, police officers out there. And I certainly don't think that any of you would be here. So I guess that's the best way to answer. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, how was it that Chris was able to get away with this? Because he's been in 